at work we've got a whirlpool fridge it's one of those wide ones counter depth super expensive to replace and all of a sudden it just stopped cooling so we did some basic diagnostics on it. This is me testing the red and white lead out of the inverter control box. This is kind of special because it's a inverter, kind of like a brushless motor, but that gray board in there is the inverter for the three-phase motor in the compressor. The black tub is the compressor. And that gray box is the inverter. So here I'm loosening this panel so that I can move it to the side and just get some clearance to pull that box out once I loosen it. I previously did some tests of the red and white signal line and that looked good at 12 at uh, sorry 5 volts. Uh, I was previously showing the voltmeter there. I believe it was an AC, so you need to check that. Uh, initially, I was getting almost a 12 volt reading. So you have to unhook the ground wires, and then there's a screw holding the inverter box in. That that I just unplugged is the 120 volt supply that the inverter uses for running the compressor and here I realized that there was a pigtail in there which probably means this inverter board was replaced once already so the sudden realization this is not the first time that has been replaced so once you loosen that lower screw on the inverter box this one right here you can kind of just lift it up and to the left and it'll come loose uh, just a little bit and then behind there is a connector and you can use a blade screwdriver to carefully pry it out pry it off to the left prying it off the compressor body and once you do that it's free you can pull it out there's the box and here I'm using alligator clips and leads to connect their three outputs on that, well inputs technically, on the compressor. And so I'm just connecting the first two of those, checking the impedance, and then I'm going to check, here it's 6.7, 6.8, something like that. So then I'll connect two and three and it's similar and then I'll connect three and one and make sure it's similar and it is whoop. so I didn't have it connected very well up there once I reconnected it, it looked fine now you're not sh assured that it's going to be okay if the impedance works you really need to load it up to get a thorough test but I didn't have a power supply to check the voltage drop so I just went ahead and got the replacement board it took almost a week but we got the replacement board and uh, just plugged it back in did basically the reverse of what was done to pull it out Isabel, what? do you know that if you, if you completely close up something before you turn it on after you've done a repair, it's guaranteed to not work? Why? Because, because life's just that way. So oh, just what? button everything back up. Once I put the screws in to hold it into place, I connected up, back up the red uh, and white signal line. I did need one of the pigtails. They shipped with two pigtails. So I just had to select the right one, plug it back in, 
plug in the 120 supply and connect the ground. The wires were originally tucked back behind this foam fitting, so I put them back there for the signal line. Well, what do you think? Is it going to work? Yeah. Yes. So I should put that last screw in, that last couple screws in. Sure. Plug it in. Well, it's kind of working. Moment of truth. Oh. Is that good? Is that good? Yes. That is decidedly working. Interference from the young people when they're working on the fridge as well. <laughs> So I just finished putting the last three skins and tucking wires around. It took almost a day before everything was working and I did plug it in, uh, check the compressor was running, unplugged it, hooked up some wires and then plugged it back in. It didn't start running immediately. So I unplugged it for about five minutes, plugged it back in and it was good. And at this point it's been a week or two, it's holding cool. So, easy replacement, I was surprised.